morning, Coach. How are you? Good morning, Greg. How are you doing? I'm doing well. Thanks for asking. Hey, I'm just curious, obviously, with the time you were hired, I think you were the, the coach new to the staff that had probably the least amount of time around the guys. So what did you learn during that time? And how have you been able to adjust during all this with getting to State College and everything else? Well, it's, um, you know, it's, it's, it's funny you ask that question. It's been a, uh, it's been different than um, taking over any, any other uh, job that I've ever had in my life because, you know, normally, like you say, you get that time to uh, bond with the guys and you're there, you went, you've you been through spring ball. But, uh, you know, uh, with what we're going, what's going on in, in the world right now, I uh, had to adapt a little bit, but it's going fine, you know, uh, before this thing uh, really had the big outburst. Um, I was able to uh, meet with the guys uh, several times um, as well as be with them in winter workouts. So uh, I got an opportunity that in that way to learn their personalities and kind of see them move around and see them work. Uh, you know, unfortunately, I didn't get a chance to see them uh, in pads, but uh, that's okay. Uh, you know, they say the eye in the sky doesn't lie. So I was able to watch those guys off of tape last year and how they played. And uh, so I'm pretty excited about what I saw on tape. But the transition has been, it's been good, you know, the Zoom meetings uh, that we've been able to have with the players uh, and, and, and talking about, you know, um, the, the scheme and just getting to know them that way. I've had a lot of one-on-one uh, -on -one, um, type meetings with the guys, uh, each guy just trying to get to, to learn them and know about them. So that's that's been fine as well, you know. But uh, you just you adapting uh, to what we have is definitely different, you know, compared to how it normally is. But the transition is going well uh, in State College. And, um, you know, I couldn't be more pleased uh, considering the circumstances where we are right now. Next up is Tyler Donahue, Lions 247. Hey, Coach. Uh, nice to meet you. Thanks for the insight this morning. Hey, I'm doing well. I'm doing well. Um, Good. A couple of the younger guys in your room, well, they're not so young anymore, but you're, you're inheriting Jason Owe, Adiza Isaac, and there's been a lot of conversation about both them having major ceilings uh, at Penn State and beyond. What's your initial uh, you know, feedback from what you've seen from those guys, and what do you think about that vacant starting spot that Yitor Grossmatos leaves behind? Well, I, I think you know both of those guys that you just mentioned are, are, are ultra-talented guys. Uh, both of them have – uh, great ability to uh, uh, great, great quickness, uh, great physicality. Uh, they're both smart football players. Uh, both of those guys made plays last year when they had opportunities in the game. I think, I think both of those young men, they do have a high ceiling. Um, I, I like that in group uh, a lot. You know, you, you've got some really talented players in that group with Shaka Tony and, uh, and, and, and the rest of that crew, um, Smith Filbert, uh, Shane Simmons. I mean, so you got you got quite a few guys over in that end group that can play. Uh, so I've been impressed with them. I think they have a high ceiling. You know, again, obviously not being able to see them go in spring ball and compete for uh, that spot in spring uh, is different. But, you know, when, when we are able to get back to football, those guys will be able to compete. Uh, on the field for that spot, you know. Um, so it, it, I, I like where that group can go. It's a talented group. Next up is Rich Scarcella, Reading Eagle. Hi, John. Thanks for your time today. Good morning. Um, can you uh, tell us how far back your connection with Brent Pry goes? Um, what's that relationship like, and, and how much did that play in you coming to Penn State? Okay. Um, well, Coach Pry and I go back uh, a long time. Uh, coach Pry was my position coach my last year at Western Carolina. Uh, he came in as a young coach from Virginia Tech, uh, you know, uh, full of energy and just great passion like he has now. And so he coached me my senior year. And so um, it was a couple years later, Coach Pry had moved on to go be the defensive coordinator at Louisiana Lafayette. And uh, after I finished playing, uh, you know, it, it's everybody's dream to chase playing in the NFL. So I kind of played around with arena football and the Canadian Football League and uh, decided I wanted to get back into coaching. And um, I taught 10th and 11th grade English for uh, 
almost two years and decided I love the coaching part. I coach football and hated the teaching part of it. Um, 17 and 18 year olds at that time could solve all the problems in the world. And so that kind of drove me nuts. So I decided to get out of teaching and uh, I wanted to get back into coaching. And uh, I reached out to Coach Pry, who was the defensive coordinator at Louisiana Lafayette at that time. And he gave me an opportunity to be a graduate assistant. So I went back with him my second stop for two and a half years as a graduate assistant. And then um, we reunited um, about four years later at Georgia Southern uh, when he was the defensive coordinator and uh, he gave me an opportunity to be the defensive line coach. And I was there with him uh, for a year. And then uh, Coach Franklin took him to Vanderbilt with him. And then uh, I was able to connect with him up here at Penn State. And um, that's been great. Coach Pry and I are, uh, and I are like family. I've known him for 21 years of my life. And uh, he's, a, he's a big reason why I decided to get into coaching. I just – I enjoyed the way he coached me with his energy, his passion, his knowledge of the game. And I said, man, if he can impact me like that in a year, uh, you know, that's – that's what I want to be able to do is impact young men. So, uh, so that's our relationship. But you asked, uh, well, how did that play into me coming to Penn State? And, um, you know, it, it was it was a big reason. There was a couple of reasons why I came to Penn State. Uh, you know, number one, I, I think Penn State is one of those truly unique and special places. It's a true blue blood of college football. I mean, to me, it's it's when you when you talk about what are the big college football programs, it's you know, it's Penn State, you know, you think of Iowa State, Michigan, Georgia, Alabama, those are the big places. I mean, it's one of those jobs. It's an unbelievable place. You can win a national championship. It's not one of those places that talk about it. They've done it. They've won Big Ten championships. So that was that was a big piece. And then when you get an opportunity to meet Coach Franklin and see what kind of leader he is and see you know, Coach Franklin, in the short amount of time that I've known him, um, Coach Price talked very, uh, very highly of him for a long time. And uh, just getting to know Coach Franklin, what kind of leader he is and how he treats his guys and how he cares about his players and his coaches and how he's won, you know. Um, you know, back-to-back -back seasons at Vanderbilt, 9-4 and four is really good. And then coming up here, the, the level he's been able – of success he's, he's had up here. So – that made it very attractive to be around Coach Franklin. And then, again, you know, it goes back to Coach Pry, the familiarity that, that I have with him. And uh, I've, I've coached with him. You know, I understand how he calls the game and how he operates. And it's just uh, – that that's just a natural fit. So, you know, all those factors varied in. But, you know, obviously Coach Pry was, you know, instrumental in getting me connected with Coach Franklin and, and, that, and that piece of it. Next up is Audrey Snyder with The Athletic. Hey, thanks for your time this morning. Good morning. How are you? I'm good, thanks. Um, hope, you, hope you're doing well. Um, I'm just wondering. Good, good. Just wondering, John, um, if you could kind of take us back a little bit to the hiring process. It, I don't know, maybe it feels like it was a little while ago. Um, <laughs> What's your relationship like with Sean Spencer? Because, I mean, obviously there have been some connections um, over the years. Um, you know, well, when this job uh, came open, um, you know, Coach Pride reached out and, um, you know, he just kind of said, hey, you know, we may lose, we, we may lose Spence. Uh, you know, he's going to have an unbelievable opportunity. And uh, if it does – uh, you know, come, you know, we, you know, we'd like to talk to you, you know, see if you'd be interested. And um, so that's kind of how it played out. And uh, Spence and I have known each other uh, for a long time. Um, I got to know Sean when uh, Coach Pride went to uh, Vanderbilt. Uh, you know, I got, I got a chance to, to, to meet him and know him. We talked football. We kind of just uh, became friends and, uh, you know, stayed in contact with each other. So, you know, he, he started telling me about what a great opportunity uh, it was uh, he had here at Penn State and what it was like working with Coach Franklin, along with what uh, Coach Pry had said, with working with Coach Franklin. And, you know, there was immediate, um, you know, I, I was excited about it, just knowing how 
good of a program this is and just to have an opportunity to coach at a place like Penn State. Uh, I was excited about that. And so it just went. I, I had an opportunity to, to talk with Coach Franklin and uh, talk with the defensive staff. And, you know, things just kind of fell in place. Sorry about that. Next up is Mark Brennan, Lions 247. Hey, John, thank you uh, from me as well. Yes, sir. Good morning. Hey, uh, what can you? What have you gotten to know about uh, Joseph Darkwa so far? I know you haven't had a lot of time to work with him, and can you tell us a little bit about what you see as his upside? And it just kind of occurred to me now: what is his situation now? Where Where is he living? What is he doing? Because obviously, for an international kid, this has to be a tough situation. Yeah, uh, Joseph Darkwa is is a uh, is a great young man. Um, getting to know him. Uh, he is, it's been fun. Uh, he's, he's, uh, in state college. He's, uh, he's here. So, uh, we're, we're able to, uh, make sure he's okay. Uh, not being able to go back home, but, um, I, have really enjoyed getting to know him. He's a personable young man, cares about his family. Uh, he cares about getting a great education and he cares about football a lot. He's a very conscientious kid, uh, with, with a good heart. He, um, you know, watching him in the workouts and having an opportunity, to, the, the little individual that we get during the workouts, uh, it's been good. I think Joseph is a strong, powerful young man. He runs well. Uh, he does a really good job uh, of being physical and striking. I, I see him as having a high seat, and I think he's going to be a physical guy uh, that could be a dominant uh, run stopper inside. Uh, he's got good feet. Uh, he's got he's got a good quickness for a guy his size, um, and he's going to be a strong kid, and, he, and he's not going to let anybody outwork him. You know, uh, one of the things that you know when you get freshmen like this coming into the uh, the winter workouts for the first time, it's always hard because they they've never been through something like this, and uh, you know everybody's just as good as as you are as they are coming in, and so. Uh, watching him kind of battle through that and adjust uh, his last couple workouts were, were really good. You know, you could see him take the growth and figure it out. So I'm extremely excited about what he can bring to the table and uh, what he can be for us. Next up is John Petishnock, happyvalley.com. Hey, good morning, John. It's nice to meet you and hope you and your family are doing well. Yes, same to you. Good morning morning once you join a new team how do you develop trust and a connection with the guys you're coaching and once you're able how important is it to spend time with them off the field to learn more about them um those those are good questions so uh it's it's very important john to uh get to know those guys Im immediately when you come in uh one of the things i like to do is have uh one-on-one -on -one meetings with them right away so i can get a sense of who they are and and what they're about and uh, have those conversations and get around them uh, a lot. Um, I think that the second part of that is, you know, one of the things that I like to do is, you know, normal situations when you're, you're, you're new and you're coming in, I like to go out to eat with those guys or I have them over your house. So, you know, where they can just relax and you can see their personalities and uh, you can see who they really are. So, I try to I try to spend as much time with those guys as I can to get to know them and uh, get to know their families. You know, one of the first things you do, uh, you reach out to their parents and just make sure that they open that line of communication and they give you uh, information and bits and pieces about who the player is. I like reached out to the high school coaches once I got here. They also can give you some good uh, backstory into you know, who you're coaching and what kind of kid and what kind of player you got. So I think all those, you try to use all those variables to find information and then and, uh, form, a, form a relationship with them. And I think that's important for, uh, for them, but it's also important for you so they get an, um, they get an opportunity to, to figure out things about you as well. So that's one of the first things that I think you got to develop is, is a relationship. You got to develop that trust. You got to develop that bond. Next up is Bob Flounders, Penn Live. Hi, John. Thanks for your time. How are you doing today? I'm good. I'm good, John. I wanted Can to ask, 
Yes, yes, I can. Thanks, John. Um, I wanted to mm -hmm. ask you about your defensive tackle group. Can you assess what you've seen from your veterans, P.J. Mustafer and Shelton? And, John, can you also talk about the challenge of developing uh, your third and fourth tackles so you have a rotation you can trust, you know, once you guys get back on the football field? And who are some of the guys maybe that might be in line for that kind of playing time? Okay. Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, uh, watching our tackles, you know, one of the first things that I did when I, when I took this job was I always like to look at game tape to uh, kind of see what see what kind of players you got inside. And, you know, you're right about PJ and, and, uh, and Antonio. Uh, those are two guys that I've been down through it. Uh, they're proven guys. Um, I, I still think their best football's ahead. Uh, they do a lot of things well. Uh, I think we got a we got a chance for those two uh, to be really really good inside. Uh, they're stout guys versus a run, and they know how to adjust and rush the passer. I like I like those two a lot. I think another guy that um, you know that 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 I like to see uh, more, and I think he did a nice job when he was in there was Fred Hanzar. He's another good good player uh, inside for us. Um, you know, you got some young guys I feel like that are coming on with a, a Keen Beeman. Uh, I think it's, it's a guy you got to watch. Um, you know, uh, Cole Bavard is an, he's a young guy, but he, he's another guy that's strong and, and you got to watch out for him inside Joseph Darkway. So, I mean, I think there's a, there's a whole list of guys, uh, that, that you could throw in that mix, uh, that's coming along and giving us quality depth. You know, one of the guys that I've really enjoyed watching, uh, in the winter conditioning was Joe, Judge Culpepper. He's another uh, physical high motor guy. So I think there's a lot of quality. Uh, there's a lot of quality guys, you know, um, in that group. Uh, I think it's going to be critical when we are able to get back. Uh, those guys coming along, uh, just developing uh, like we need to. You know, uh, one of the things that we'll do is we'll focus on. The basics, uh, fundamentals, uh, they already have a good base. Coach Spence has done a really good good job, giving them a good base. And I'm going to try to build upon that base and get them ready to go. But, I mean, I think amongst that group of guys, uh, you got a quality, quality uh, group of candidates to come in, you know, to help us be able to roll five, five to six guys inside you know, and keep guys fresh and, and, and keep hitting the old lineman wave after wave. So, I like – we got a nice pool of guys. And uh, we'll continue to, to work and, and um, you know, get those guys ready to go. Next up is Joe Giuliano, Philadelphia Inquirer. Good morning, John. It's nice to meet you. Good morning, Joe. Um, what were your uh, initial impressions and in your personal first personal contacts with Shaka Tony? And uh, what are your expectations for him uh, this season in terms of leadership? Okay. Um, you know, the first time I met Shaka, I, I, I was impressed at how um, how good of a, a teammate Shaka Tony is and how, how connected he is with, with the guys. I mean, uh, when, when, it, when you walk in that room, it's like all the guys look up to Shaka uh, because, you know, he, the way he played, uh, he cares deeply about his teammates. Uh, he's got some um, – you know, his teammates look up to him. Uh, he can be – he has an um, – he can have an unbelievable uh, presence uh, in, in the meeting room because uh, his, his teammates believe, believe in him. And, uh, you know, so I, I think from that aspect, he, he's a veteran guy that has played a lot of good ball. He's very knowledgeable about the game. He's very knowledgeable about how, how to do certain things, and the guys look up to that. Um, so I, I think his presence uh, for the young guys can be really good. Um, you know, he, he can he has he has some strong leadership qualities. Uh, you know, so I, I think he can. I think Shaka can have a great year. Um, you know, he's got to conti just continue to to, um, to work at his craft, and that's one of the things that we talk about. Just being uh, everybody working at your craft and um, continuing to get better. But he can have a really really um, big impact for our defense, uh, just with his, his leadership capability. You guys freeze. 
Yeah, we froze for a minute. You left off okay. at uh, right. his leadership capability. Say that again, Greg. I'm sorry. You froze so again. You were, you were saying um, you were talking about Shaka's uh, leadership capability, and then you cut off. Right, right. He he has he had he has the capability to uh, you know grab those young guys uh, that are still trying to figure it out and and um, lead them down the direction um, that that you know and the vision that Coach Franklin has set for this football team. You know, he has the ability to do that. Those guys, those young guys, and listen to him. So, you know, he's got a he'll have a, he'll have a positive voice. But I, I think the, the, the ceiling is high for him, um, especially he continues to work uh, like, like he, he's capable and needs to, to work this offseason. You know, I know it's challenging for everybody, but, you know, shaka has got some, some really good um, athletic ability. He's got a, he's got a good mind. Um, he understands concepts. He understands defense. So I think his, his ceiling can be pretty high for us. Next up is John South. Center Daily Times. Hey, John. Glad to hear you're doing well. Yes, sir. Uh, same, for, same for you. Thank you. How important is it to build a relationship with the room's leader like Shaka when you take a new job uh, just to sort of establish trust with everybody? I, I, I think that's critical. Um, I, I think, you know, one of the things you have to do is you, you, the, the relationships to me are – are the biggest thing in, in, in coaching college football or, or coaching young people. you got to go in and establish a relationship. And I think it's a bonus or, or a huge plus when you can establish that with, um, you, you know, who the guys perceive to be the leader of the room or the, or, or the leader of, of your group. I think you have to have a good relationship uh, with that guy. Um, so I, I think when, you, when you're able to establish a good relationship, uh, with, with someone the guys look up to. I think that only helps you uh, as a coach uh, in the room and it, it only helps the other guys to, to buy in and, um, you know, kind of fall in line too. So that's, a, that's a critical piece. Time for a couple more questions. We got Elton Hayes, CNHI, Pennsylvania. Hey, Coach, how are you doing? Good morning. How are you? Good. Thanks for doing this for us this morning. We appreciate Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Hey, Coach, your resume includes, you know, uh, power five stops in the SEC at two schools in the Big 12 where you uh, coached under uh, Cliff Kingsbury. What's mm -hmm. it like coming to the Big 10? And uh, what are some things you're looking forward to at the conference? And uh, what are some things you you know, expect to maybe be challenge, challenges being new in the uh, conference and the new landscape? Well, you know, um, I, I'm excited to uh, to coach in the Big 10. You know, um, I, I, always, I always felt like the Big 10 – uh, was was one of the best two leagues in the country, uh, in, in my opinion. I felt like it was the Big Ten and the SEC. You look at the um, you look at the teams that come out of those those leagues and and the grind it is week to week uh, in, in, in those leagues uh, playing other teams. So I'm super excited. You know, you always uh, you know you'd always watch the games in the Big Ten. I know when I was at South Carolina and, and Arkansas to kind of see what's going on in other leagues. So I think this is a great league. It's a great conference. Uh, they play a great brand of football. It's one of those leagues, in my opinion, that, you know, you see a, a lot of young men getting drafted out of this league. Um, you know, when I, when I coached for the Jets, we had uh, quite a few guys from the Big Ten and SEC that seemed to be what, like where most of our players came from in those two conferences. So I couldn't be more excited to uh, be in a, in a in a conference like this and, be on a great team like Penn State. But, um, you know, I think you asked me, you know, what are we kind of looking to accomplish or, or, or do? You know, I, I'm looking forward to doing everything I can to help this great university and, um, you know, help, help our football team, you know, obviously win as many games as we can and, you know, also win a Big Ten championship and, and higher. So I'm looking to be a, a, a good piece of that. You know, they have a great foundation here and, I want to do everything I can to have a lot of added value. So I'm excited about what we can do. Um, I'm excited about um, uh, going, to, going to different places and coaching on the road. I'm looking forward to that. Um, so I think, I think this, uh, uh, this, I think the, the world of the Big Ten Conference is it's a great league, great league, super excited. Last question is Nate Bauer, Blue White Illustrated. 
Hey, John, you, um, you touched previously on, on PJ Mustafer. I'm wondering if you could expand a little bit. What, what type of potential do you see for him and, and what, what strikes you most um, about him, uh, whether it's his personality or, or the way he plays? Well, you know, I'll, I'll touch on both a little bit. I, I think um, PJ's personality is kind of infectious. He, he, wants to, he wants to learn. He wants to, he wants to do things the way you want him to do them. Uh, he's a great, great teammate. Uh, he brings a lot of energy to the workout. He's a positive young man. Uh, he's a guy you just want to be around all the time. I mean, he's a, he's a great young man. Um, as far as on the football field, watching his tape, man, I really enjoy how hard P.J. plays. P.J. plays hard. Uh, he's a physical player. Uh, he's a smart guy. He gets things. I think he has a, a really good quickness. I think we can uh, – I think we can take the next level, next step with PJ uh, as we continue to hone in on some of his, uh, his technique uh, on some things. Um, I think we can hone in on the next level of him just uh, having, you know, having the opportunity, uh, taking advantage of his opportunities and, you know, just continue to be more disruptive. I, I think he can continue to, uh, to grow and, uh, and, and get better in that category, but he has all the tools. He's got the work ethic. Uh, he's got the motor. Um, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing him blossom a little bit, Nate.